much for <coughs> for this gathering. Um, well, actually, don't know where to start from, but I I must be sincere that I'm extremely excited to to be before you and of course to share one or two things about the project Jagun Jagun, you know. Um, I actually conceived the idea of Jagun Jagun before I produced Thing of Thieves, right? I conceived this idea before the production of Agat Shikunle. Right, so uh, I know Jagun Jagun is a bigger project, so I decided to do like a test run with um, Agat Shikunle. You know, filling the pause of um, the the global community and vis-a-vis -vis the way they would accept an indigenous project like a, a Yoruba movie. So um, I was shocked with the acceptability of Agashikoli, and that also motivated and provoked the idea and the fact that I have to go on and do something bigger. So which made me actualize my dream of bringing I mean, Jagun Jagun into picture. All right, so Jagun Jagun, uh, my, my major motive of producing Jagun Jagun was to pass a social message in a cultural way. And of course, to showcase the beauty of Yoruba culture to the entire world, you know. So Jagun Jagun is a fiction. It's not an historical event. It's the story I came up with and um, is a satire, right. so um, it has nothing to do with any history of Yoruba land that has happened before. You know, it's um, the story that I came up with, and um, we it took um, it took us almost six months to put together the storyline of Jack and Dragon because we're going back and forth. I I intentionally paid attention to details because I tried as much as possible to produce a film, which is going to be flawless. All right. So um, I invited um, members of the industry that are very vast in what they do, held that. I even invited some novice that in the audience, just to feel the audience perspective when I was putting together the, the story of Jack and Jack. So, we eventually had a script after about the sixth draft. You know, we were going back and forth. And we went to the location, which it was shot in your town, in your state, you know. And so after the completion of the story, the main, one of the major challenges we had was casting. All right, there are so many beautiful actors that I saw in different roles, but unfortunately the language barrier could not make them come on set. You know, we were even hard to take up training um, for some of those cast to be able to speak indigenous Yoruba language. Indigenous Yoruba language is totally different from the one we speak in Lagos. I was born bred but had in Lagos. So the Yoruba we speak in Lagos is me the law school, me the law, me the law and all that. But if you if you feel the pulse of the Yoruba that we speak in um, the movie Jagun Jagun you know that it is more of an indigenous. Um, the, one of the major casts, which is Latifa Dedimeji, and I said to him that I have a project that's going to take about three months of your time. I know it's going to be a little bit difficult. And he shouted, ah, three months, I said, yes. So two months is going to be for you to you know, keep fit, go to gym, and um, have about 40 days to film. You know, still gonna have about two weeks of training, you know. And it's to him it sounded so challenging. And he gave his words that he was gonna do it. So when we got to the location, he started the journey. Truly, if you look at Latif and the film, he he was very fit, you know, he had muscles, you know, and uh, so many people felt like ah. Is this Latiba the Dimeji, you know? So we we're fully prepared for the project. Unfortunately, the first scene he will shoot, he broke his leg. You know, and um, so he felt he was not going to be able to play the role. But looking back from where he started, how he's been preparing for the role, I felt it was going to be very bad for 
us to say, well, because you've broken your leg, we're probably going to get another actor. And I said to him, you're going to do it. So with the help of body doubles, with the help of, um, you know, other I mean, crew members, because we were caught shooting, as to show us we're leaving to rest for a while, we pick up again, you know, and we delivered. You know, so that was a major thing for me on that set. You know. Okay, so we had quite a number of challenges on the set too. The major one for me was weather. The weather wasn't friendly at the beginning of our preparation to principal photography, you know. So we had constructed, we, of course, we built from the scratch the, the warrior school, you know, Ubuntu school, we built from the scratch. We were first faced with the challenge of purchasing that land, you know. We wanted to own the land. Uh, at a point, we had a nod, we paid. So, okay, so the children of the owner came back and like, no, we were not selling. Okay, okay. we've gone after like 60% constructed and the children just came from Lagos, no way. And they were ready to destruct everything we built, you know. So that held off for almost a week, going to police station, going to the Orbas, you know, appealing to them. So uh, until we were made to do an undertaking that we were not going to buy, we were just going to be there for a couple of months to shoot, you know. It was a major challenge. If I, it was very demoralizing, you know. So, um, Eventually, we we got there, and so we built and we were ready to film. Like ninety five percent completed the the construction, then a heavy rainfall <laughs> and destroyed everything we built. And of course, we had to start again from the beginning. You know, it was a lot on the art director, and of course, it was a lot on my pocket as well. You know, you're constructing that kind of edifice you saw in the firm, you know. But to God be the glory here we are today. Um, all those challenges were, uh, were, we over, I mean, we conquered all those challenges and then um, eventually it is victory. I knew Dragon Dragon would be a blockbuster, but I never knew it was going to be as much as this. You know, I got hairy when I got a message from Netflix and calling me Mr. Worldwide. You know, I I was really touched that could this be a Yoruba film? You know, doing this. I got several calls from eminent people, from scholars, you know, reviews, some poem reviews. At the point, I had an automated response of thank you, God bless you, you know, my phone it was overwhelming. And at the same time, I became scared. What next? Is it, <clears throat> is it going to be bigger than Jagun Jagun? I, I was so confident I was going to be, beat King of Thieves. Like I told you, I have, I have this idea of Jagun before King of Thieves. So I was confident that I was going to beat of things. What inspired the story of Jagun Jagun is simply the youth and the environment of Nigeria. I, okay, I'll, st I'll still tell you categorically that I'm a youth in Nigeria and I, I felt the pause of what's happening between the youth and the government, you know. So I felt, okay, I should pass a meter. I was seeing it from a different perspective. I was seeing it that we youth have a lot to do. We have a major role to play in the society. So I was seeing it from that perspective, and I wanted to pass that message in an extremely unique way, you know, and doubling the fact that I want to showcase the beauty of Yoruba culture to the world. So that, that's what actually inspired the storyline of um, Dagon Dagon. You know, I had a social message to put pass across to the youths, and I intended to do it in a cultural way, that's it. And from Mind TV, I want to ask how you've been able to successfully execute this role in the movie, because 
Mm. Well, I've been <laughs> I've been acting for over thirty years, and um, you know, most times in the creative world, you even learn on the job, you know. So, and I know that um, I'm a versatile actor, and um, I just think I need to show the world my versatility. I've done that in several projects. I just feel I should. As a film, as a producer, I could have given that role to someone else. You know, in fact, the, I felt at the point when I was conceiving the idea, I was thinking I was going to play Latifa Dedimidji's role. You know, yeah. so and we had a lot of arguments for and against. You know, and I saw the reasons why I shouldn't play that role. You know, okay, so playing. Ogunti G in Jagun Jagun. For me, it's just displaying my craft. I, of course, I analyze the character. Very wicked character, very, very wicked and colors, you know. And if you observe all through the movie, Ogunti G just smiled once. You can begin to wonder if he's got emotions at all, you know. And, um, I used to know of one man down our village that there's that presumption that the man has a lot of chance, you know, and the man is not always straight, you know, he shakes his neck like that. And I asked one of his sons that, Play to that man, Yoruba. And, and Yoruba is a bag money. That, that means too much of charms disturbs him. So the demons in him controls him, you know. And that's why you see Ogunjiji is seen, without being there, he's seen everything that is happening in in his school, you know. So I remember that and, and he feels that and that's the I, I, I always <laughs> shakes his neck like that, you know. So I picked that and I also picked the fact that um Okay, Femi has a very, very subtle voice, kind of unique voice. Some, some ladies even call it sexy voice. You know? <laughs> so obviously, Ogunjiji will not have that kind of a voice. You know? I intended to pick up a particular voice from another person. And that was why I was able to come up with, you know, change the voice. You know? and, just, and of course, with the help of the makeup, it looked very first for you know and that's how we did it so now that has been a misconception going around uh, at a particular scene from Jabu Jabu, which i have my own recitation as well but i would like you to give us the interpretation or the inspiration <coughs> that's a particular scene where i would uh uh told Botija to go and attack the uid village which many people have their own reservation, especially the omnisheshes, saying that why should that come up, especially at this critical hour where uh, the traditionalists and some of the religious bodies are having issues. I have my own reservation, but what interpretation or what is the inspiration behind that scene? Rudiji's motive is basically to get rid of uh, Botija, right? Rudiji never believes he can actually win that war. You know, unfortunately, Ogunjiji does not even know that it was a celebration day for them at Ibuaji. All right, and um, I have a belief that in Yoruba land there are some people that are just referred to as Akonda. Akonda simply means specially created human beings by God. No matter what you do to them, they will stay true. You know, so that is the kind of person. What is all right? So it was set there with the intention or with the motive from well, I mean, Ubuntu that he was going to die. Okay, so celebrating the idea that generated a lot of controversies, you know, especially from the custodians of the Isheshis, you know, this they have forgotten that this is a film. And as a filmmaker, you have a license, all right? 
you have a picture to uh, you know to deliberately tie down your audience you know it has nothing absolutely nothing to do um to the shashes it's a celebration day and that happened anything can happen on the day you're celebrating christmas anything can happen we have seen bandits that enter the church on the on a Sunday service and killed almost everybody. Do you understand? So I see it as a little bit being um, myopic in their thinking. You know? So as a filmmaker, I'm just I just painting a picture I have in my head, and of course to make it look so beautiful before my audience, you know, and that I was able to achieve. You know, I'm a custodian of Yoruba culture, a promoter of Yoruba culture. So I would not and never do anything that automatically will bring out the, the beauty of your culture. Okay, we can one day meet and they could listen to him. Why should we keep it that inspiration? Because that's one of my major things in the movie. And for the fact that this time around we are working with more action and less talk. Sir, please, we really need you to talk about this. Well, like if you had actually listened to me properly, that was the major motive and very behind that that. Yeah, and that was why I used my driver license to ensure that that character got to their face the camera at that point. And you know, G, a DJ, a You understand? Okay, you're saying we have bad leaders. You're saying, okay, there is riot here and there. There are some good laws that come to the. Even if you have a peaceful protest, some people will come. All those that are coming to disrupt the protest. Are youths and they couldn't have done it themselves, they must have been pushed to do it by some influential people against we the youths that are protesting peacefully. You understand my point? So that was why I said, Wake up, you know, let us talk when we feel things are not right in a peaceful way. You know, if protest goes peacefully, the government will listen. There won't be attacks during the, they even use the opportunity of such protest to rob, to steal, and you know, deprive those that have, you know, legally worked to achieve whatever they achieved, you know, and make them homeless, you know, make them bankrupt and all. So if you had listened very well, that is the major message I have in that film. Quite a number of messages of betrayal, you know, misuse of power, so many messages. But that, if you look at that particular message, that was the only message that was passed straight into the camera. Okay, so it's it's very important for me, and that's why I said this. That I, this is what I, I, the exact amount I was using, shooting or producing that, that for quite a number of uh, millions went into it, yeah, and, and you can see that. Like I said, when I was talking, I said I have a reservation. My interpretation to that particular scene, yeah, like I do that on Facebook. I, um, basically, many people that review of that, 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 what is the current situation of our what is the economic situation we have right now in our country, Nigeria? The economy has been brought down by some of the cows. Some of the people, and that is our origin that has been attacked by these influential people, these bad leaders we are talking about. And that is the interpretation I gave to that scene that a bad leader actually, because he wants to bring somebody down, instructed that person to go and attack a village. He knows that it's a taboo to attack UIG, and he did that successfully just because that person also has a mission. To also get to another level in life, so that is my own interpretation to to that scene. Okay. <laughs> Your interpretation, <laughs> not my own intention exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> not my own intention exactly. But it's okay. You know, you 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 have so many interpretations. So I've seen reviews that have even taken me to what I did not actually have in my head when I was putting up the storyline. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, okay, my last question, sorry. So, uh, many people have been asking this question that we only saw uh, 
Yes, Lord Tepsis himself, the Grand Charter, at the tail end of the movie. I should be expecting a part two or there is something different we are missing out that we have not been told. Uh, can you just tell us what is a uh, what what inspires the Grand Charter or what we should be looking forward to? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, but I I just feel so many people want to see more, you know. So I don't know. I I probably may, may be letting the the press know later if I actually have more, you know. But sincerely now, I'll say I don't know. <laughs> One last question. Yeah. So um, as a filmmaker, I believe that uh, for every project, there's always a take home experience. I believe so from the interviews that you've done for. Judging from the fact that this project is actually a very new one, is there a particular take home experience that you personally got from this project? Um, Can you share with us? So many experiences I've gotten over time and on different projects. Well, trust me, um, it's the experience I got from this has not been different from, it's not actually different from what I've been getting on other projects, which is I should not at any point in time, you know, devaluate or look down on the success of or the um the the power of teamwork you know most all my projects have been teamwork you know and teamwork and collaboration so that is the take home i've been getting on all my projects and i got the same hair jagu jagu is not for me the success of jagu jagu is not for me, but because of Jagu, um, the success of Jagu, Jagu needs to be attributed to a particular person, probably me that conceived the idea, but I can tell you, it is for the crew and the cast, you know, on the project. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm Rakaya from Boyle. I would like to know how you were able to finance your Jagu, Jagu movie. You started from the location, the setting of Jagu, and the cast. I would like to well, finance is a major is a major thing in filmmaking now, especially when you're thinking of big scale projects. But I think I'm lucky because I'm I was able to push Agashikoli, so I used the proceeds from Agashikoli to produce Jack and Jack. So I I was lucky not to you know get funded by finance houses or individuals. But I have a secret. I don't. I don't know whether I should let it out. But um, it was extremely challenging on um, Jagun Jagun set, and um, at the point, you know, I was out of finance. You know, and because I believe so much, this project will work. You know, so I went out, sold my properties. You know. And I believe, uh, I believe it was her and yeah, it, it actually did. So I didn't regret selling my property to finish that Yagun production. One last question then, uh, What does it take to make a net standard movie? What it takes, basically, you know, where we, I think we blessed with fantastic storyline, I mean, story, Storyline, um, story ideas in in the Yoruba genre. We are really blessed, but I think we should look more of the scale. So basically, if you produce a good story on a big scale, then I know that um, it might meet up next to standard. Yeah, this that um. The message should be that no matter who you are, you can always face every adversity irrespective of the mountains you face. It's important. All right? And Jagun Jagun is the voice of the underdog. Believe me. So we need to avoid political angle. Yeah, I think so. So, in our interpretation of that film, let's avoid the political angle. But let's talk to ourselves with the youth, because I believe 
even if they're coming from the political angle and we, we stand fair, we will not be used as instruments of destruction. Thank you very much. On behalf of Tony Adebayo production team at Ethereum 360 Media, uh, I appreciate you for coming. Um, your presence is highly, highly valued. So, I, I believe that with what you have heard here today, you are more well fed about how Jabu Jabu came up and um, you definitely the media is part of the success story and development because truly uh, there is no success in isolation. The win is for us all. And um, uh, we are glad that the media community in Nigeria is taking Jago Jago as our own project. And, um, we, we see everything. We see every platform that has been promoting us. And we appreciate every word for the level of support so far. So uh, on that note, we really require for more support. Don't let it end here. Our subsequent projects and productions will be glad to have you on board at all levels of um, need and concern. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I, uh, on a final note from me, the media are my friends. The media are one of the major strengths that I know and I keep and I've been using for over the years. So I will not at any point, you know, on the look or on the mind the media power. So I want to say thank you for always supporting my brand. I really appreciate you. And please, um, Femalibar's brand is an extremely accommodating brand. So please feel free at any point in time and let's synergize on any projects you also have. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you.